and this is Disa Alticola. That uh, grows in very shallow, sandy soil. Humus rich, with the uh, water leaking onto these flat surfaces on rock sheets from the grass felt surrounding it. You can see the those fat, fleshy leaves of Ledoboria sandersonii. They have, uh, or this particular form has beautiful blue flowers in early spring, just after the first rainfall. What makes Disa alticola really beautiful is those deep purple ovaries and bracts with this crystal clear white flower. Here you can see the grass and literally leaking water after the rains into the shallower areas on these rock sheets. And there's more Ledoboreas. Here you can actually see seeds from the Ledoboreas germinating in the water. And every now and then you'll find one of these Disos where the bracts and the ovaries have none of the maroon or the red uh, colouring to it where it's just gone green like this one with the white flowers So there's definitely natural variation within the colony, but overall the dominant gene is probably the maroon with the white flowers. So this grassland is sitting at just over 2000 meters. It's not that high, but in the area it's fairly high, so at night in that when the mist rolls in, it definitely gets water, even though it doesn't rain. So the shallow soil has moisture content throughout most of the summer and then dries out completely in winter. definitely a treat to see them like this in full bloom and if you get your nose up close they have one of the few orchids that actually have a scent a faint sweet sort of lily scent to attract nighttime pollinators or at least that's my guess but they definitely do have a nice scent as well. <laughs> 